Hello, welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts. My name is Peter Singh and I'm from Past Test. Joining me to answer some questions on endocrinology is Professor Colin Dayan. We're going to discuss questions regularly raised by candidates whilst revising for their MRCP Part 2 exam. Professor Dayan, thank you for joining me. Hello. Can I ask, how do we reduce the risk of hypoglycemia in type 1 or type 2 diabetes? Thank you, Peter. This is a very important issue. It's a practical issue as well. If we just have a little look at the slide, I've made a list here. And I've started, first of all, with type 2 diabetes, because this is more straightforward. So first of all, we need to avoid the sulfonylureas. They've got a high risk of hypoglycemia. Uh, and also, if people are on insulin, then if there's a way of avoiding the insulin, that would be helpful. And so promoting the use of GLP-1 agonists, which have a very low risk of hypoglycemia, is very helpful. In type 2 diabetes, it's much more difficult. So we begin with thinking about matching insulin to food, and we try and train the patient to match their insulin exactly to food, to the glycemic index of food, the carbohydrate intake, and to think about insulin and exercise. And there are specific training courses, such as one called the Daphne training course, dose adjustment for normal eating. Also, it's sometimes helpful to use analog insulins. But there's a problem when people begin to develop hypoglycemia because, as we often say in diabetes, hypos beget hypos. And what that means is that when you have lots of hypoglycemic reactions, you don't feel them anymore and you don't react to them. So one approach is to try and persuade people to run higher blood sugars, and that means that they'll feel hypoglycemia more. And if they're more aware of it, then they're likely to be able to avoid it. So that's important. If that doesn't work, uh, insulin pump therapy is a more sophisticated way of delivering insulin and has been shown to reduce the incidence of hypoglycemia. Connected with that, uh, newer approaches are use of continuous glucose monitoring, which probably should help, although it hasn't been documented in, uh, in controlled trials to reduce the incidence of hypoglycemia. And finally, hypoglycemia can be absolutely devastating for people and is the key indication for islet cell transplantation or you can use whole pancreas transplantation, which would get rid of it altogether. Thank you for that, Professor. We pose more questions to Professor Diane here on our website. Be sure to watch them all, and I'll see you again for another Ask the Experts.